This is Mommy Beluga Investing. Hi there, back again with me, Rati, in Mommy Beluga Investing. In this video, I'm going to analyze Singapore Medical Group with stock symbol 5OT and traded in SGX Catalyst Board. My quick take for SMG are 1. It seems like a turnaround and a kind of a growing company. But 2. It's a kind of a dividend stingy company as well. Third, for now, I'm not interested in having any position in SMG just yet. Okay, how did I reach the above conclusions? Follow my video as I quickly discuss the company's profile, EPS, dividend, and other numbers. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginning YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or input, do not hesitate to put in comment section. It will probably help me to get more perspectives and learn more eventually coming up with better video. You can also access this channel in podcast version through Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast platforms. The channel is the same, Mummy Beluga Investing. Okay, before getting into the data, I read out the disclaimer as usual. This is an amateur video. My main intention is to record my own journey, learning and practicing investing from scratch. Over time, you may find the, some con inconsistencies with my analysis and conclusions. Please bear with me. My analysis is limited to the public data that I can access and the scope of my knowledge. Both of those change over time. This video shouldn't replace any financial advice and neither suggestion to take position, buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decisions. But if you do your own research, I hope that this video could be useful somehow. Now let's start from a brief company's profile. Okay, this company SMG was incorporated on incorporated sorry in Singapore on the 10th of March 2005 under the name Lassic Club Private Limited. Okay, the company changed its name to Singapore Medical Group Private Limited on August 4th of August 2006. The company was converted into a public limited company and renamed Singapore Medical Group Limited on 9th of July 2009. The group principal activities lie in the provisions of multidisciplinary specialized specialist healthcare services across the fields of the first one is ophthalmology, aesthetic medicine, sports medicine and oncology. That's the current one. The group currently operates 10 medical clinics in Singapore, which are categorized into four medical clusters. The first one is the eye cluster. The second one is the aesthetic cluster. Yeah. The, and then the third one is sports cluster. And then the fourth one is clinical illness cluster. Yeah. Which, as we can see on the screen, aligns with the, the fields offered by the group. Based on its 2020 annual reports, we can see that most of the revenue in 2009 and 2020 were coming from the health sector. Yeah, instead of diagnostic, yeah, uh, diagnostic and then others. While, as we can also see from the same report, the massive growth occurred in other segments, though revenue wise, the number is dropped by the health and diagnostic and aesthetic segment. Okay, 2020 annual reports also mention international expansion or growth yeah, in Vietnam, Indonesia, and Australia. In Indonesia, second Chiputra SMGI clinic was opened in Surabaya in 2020, after the first one in Jakarta. In Australia, quoting from its annual report, city fertility achieved substantial growth in revenue and profitability despite the pandemic in 2020. Okay. On the screen, we have the substantial shareholder based on its 2020 annual report. Uh, the non-executive chairman, Mr. Tony Tan Chun Kit, and uh, CEO, Dr. Bang Tech Liang, hold around 7 and 6% of the company's share, respectively. Yeah. 
Well, according to the 20 largest shareholder as of 22nd of March 2021, we can see that Mr. Dr. Sorry, not Mr. Dr. Wong Seng Wang, the company's executive director, holds around 2% of the company's share. According to the annual report, Dr. Wong is currently the medical director and consultant medical oncologist of the Cancer Center at SMG. He holds the appointments of Executive Director of the Board of Directors and Chairman of the Medical Board of SMG. Okay, on the screen, we can see the 20 largest shareholder. We can see that IFAS has a 0.5% yeah, uh, percent of the company share. Six months ago, I published my analysis uh, video on the stock. My verdict back then was the company was kind of attractive, but very expensive. It still is currently. Okay, uh, with P ratio almost touching 60, yeah, I can still see that it's very expensive. That's for IFAS, yeah? Okay, for SMG, that was a quick company's profile. Now let's have a look at the company's performance. Let's start from its EPS history. Okay, as usual, here I plotted the earning per share or EPS for the last 13 years since 2000. Nine. I also added a horizontal green dashed line as a guide to zero level. Earning below this line indicates that the company is recording a loss for that particular year. We can see that the company has recorded a loss in the past, that is from 2011 and then yeah, to 2013, then once more in 2015. Based on its annual report, in 2011, the company reported decline in eye clinic. Then in 2012, the company reported decline in eye and aesthetic clinic, but increase in orthopedics and sports cluster. There were multiple unfavorable situations happened in 2013. You can see there's a very deep dive there. Yeah, deep, yeah. Uh, deep dip <laughs> there that led to 6.3 million dollar loss the biggest contribution was the redeemable redeemable convertible preference shares okay it's short rcps uh, after a little digging what i can understand about rcps is uh it was a special scheme for the ex-chairman and ex-executive preference stock that preference stock schemes contain that the term that if the company stock fall below 28 cent per share, the ex bosses uh, could ask the company to buy from them at 28 cent per share. The SMG share price did fall to about 10 cents in 2013. Indeed, indeed the ex bosses exercised their right on the 30th of October 2013 which kicked SMG even deeper financially. This exercise contributed 28% of the company's loss that year. Okay, secondly, the second largest uh, was the loss related to China joint venture. This loss was reported to be 1.2 million, which contributed to almost 20% of the loss. This loss happened in the mid of declining eye clinic, aesthetic, ortho, and sport. Okay, let's move on to 2014. 2014 saw so significant recovery in terms of profitability. In this period, China joint venture had ceased to operate. This one drain had was, was unplugged back then. There were also recovery in oncology, obstetrics, and gyneco gynecology clinics. Okay, the next step happened in 2020. The company operation have been impacted by COVID-19, but not as bad as the dip in 2013, as we can see on the screen. 20% of the revenue, the company's revenue, was contributed by medical tourism and foreign patients. The travel restriction had impacted the company's earnings. One thing to note is that the company was also held afloat by 2.6 million job support scheme and 1.5 million for rental assistance. Okay, next, earning in 2021 seems like continuing their upward trend, at least till the first half of 2021. 
We still need to see whether their expansion to Vietnam, Indonesia and Australia is going to be profitable in the coming year. Okay, that's all about the company's earning per share uh, since 2009. Now let's take a look at how much dividend the shareholders have enjoyed so far. Let's look at the company's dividend history. Okay, to see the dividend payout and its sensibility, so here I plotted three layers of information. The first one is a dividend payout over the last 13 years, which are plotted as red round markers connected by a thick red line, as we can see on the screen. On each of the points, I've annotated with two numbers. The number above yeah, is in Singapore dollars, the dividend payouts, and the ones below are the payout ratios to the respective year's earning per share. Okay, as a comparison to the earnings here, I plotted back the EPS or earning per share as a thinner line with the same color, red. Okay, so far from my record, SMG only distributed their earnings as dividend only four times. Yeah, since 2009. That was on 2010, 2011, 2020 and 2021, which was from the year before. Noting that the earnings of the past year is distributed in the current year. For example, the dividend distributed in 2010 was from its 2009 earning. Uh, considering the earnings situation from 2011 to 2015, I guess it made sense that was there was no dividend distributed back then. I guess the cash was better used for turning the company around, which seems to be working as the earnings bounce back till 2020. Earning bounce back justified a dividend payout in 2020 and 2021 from earning its 2020, 2019 and 2020 respectively. Additionally, on those four occasions, the dividend distributed range from 85 to 14% of its earning. Okay, that's the dividend history since 2009. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, from different perspective. Did the dividend payout beat the bank deposit or even CPF interest? So here I plotted the average dividend yield per year as the round markers, the yeah, red round markers. At each markers, I place an error bar, which represent the range of yields over the year. The variation in a year is caused by the volatility level of the share price, the yield increase if the share price decreases, and vice versa. We can see that the last two dividend yields were about uh, one to two uh, percent. Yeah, so it doesn't seem to be very appetizing for me, at least as a dividend hunter. My target is around 6% if it's possible. So 1% to 2% doesn't seem to be very interesting. Okay, so the next question is the company's market valuation given its expansion out of Singapore. Okay, to see SMG reasonable price and market valuation, as usual, here I plotted four layers of information, which are the first one is the price, which represents market valuation of the company. It is also the easiest information that I can obtain. I can use the search term and it will pop me with this kind of graph. The price alone, as I mentioned numerously in this channel, sometimes misleading for the value of the company and its prospect. So I'd include some fundamental indicators to help me to decide. The second layer of information is the 10 times earning multiply, which here I plotted as a dashed green line. 10 times earning multiply can be considered as the price where price to earning, that is the PE ratio, is at 10. For me, I consider 10 times earning multiply has two purposes. The first one, it indicates the price where I expect, where I have higher chance to break even within 10 years. You could plot five times earning multiply if your investment horizon is only five years. Okay, secondly, as a consequence for the first reason, I consider share price above these 10 times earning multiply to be expensive. The third layer of information is 15 times earning multiply. With the same principle as 10 times earning multiply, price above this indicator will be deemed as expensive. Here I plotted the 15 times earning multiply as dash yellow line, just like the traffic light. I'll start feeling nervous if the price crosses this line, particularly for non-growth company. 
The fourth layer of information is the 2010th earning multiply. Here I plotted as a dash red line. I consider the share price to be super expensive if it ever crossed this line. For non-growth company, I consider to cut down my position if this ever happened. Okay, so now let's see what's going on with SMG's share price. Okay, at a glance to me, there were a lot of expectation to SMG's share price. It was traded relatively cheap prior to 2012, that's below the 10 earning multiply. The crisis between 2012 to 2015 doesn't seem to affect the market confidence in SMG, where the share price consistently above 20 earning multiply. There was some dip, but not that much. However, the share price increased drastically in mid 2016. Yeah, kind of a bull run, which was supported by the company's sharp earning increase. From another perspective, I feel that the share price is the leading indicator for company's performance. What I meant here is that the share price increased drastically from 2016 to mid 2017 ahead of the earnings results announcement. Normally for other companies, it's the other way around. That is the announcement of good results triggered share price increase. Uh, this could be just a coincidence, but it's very interesting to note. On the other hand, the market seemed to punish SMG hard when the earning growth stopped. From 2018 to 2020, SMG earning was a kind of a flat while the share price keep declining. Again, here the share price downward, downward trend were, happened earlier with respect to its fundamentals. It reached the lowest point in early 2020, which coincides with earning drop. It reached valuation less than 10 earning multiply for the first time since 2012. Uh, from 2021, earnings have recovered yeah, again, which was followed by share price increase till mid 2021, as we can see on the screen. This time, the market seemed to be rather cautious that the last of 2021 share price hovered around 10 earning multiply. Okay, now let's move on to the reasonable price. So here I add the price annotation. The 10 earning multiply is currently at 30 cents. So my temporary take for reasonable price for SMG is less than 30 cents. As of 4th of February 2022, when this video was prepared, SMG stock price was uh, at 30 cents per share which is right at the 10 earning multiply. This price is attractive, but the dividend yield is not so much attractive for me. As I've mentioned previously, it's around 1 to 2% in the previous year. Since I have a limited capital, I'm not putting any position yet for this company, but this may change if the dividend becomes attractive or if I sense exciting growth in the horizon. Okay, conclusion, let's wrap up this video. Yeah, okay, so in conclusion, it seems like it's a turnaround and a kind of a growing company, quite exciting, yeah? Yep, uh, it's a kind of a dividend stingy company, but it was reasonable as we have seen uh, in the video, as we have mentioned before, I've mentioned before, it was reasonable at that time, considering that the company's situation was not that good. And it's in growing period. Yeah, for now, I'm not interested in having any position in SMG just yet. But it doesn't mean that the company is not that attractive. Okay, that's all for this video. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginning YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or input, do not hesitate to put in comment section. It'll probably help me to get more perspective and learn more. You can also access this channel in podcast version through Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast platforms. The channel is still the same, Mummy Beluga Investing. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah, bye-bye.